Hi, my name is Ali Kadus. I'm the head of engineering here at Anyscale. And today I'm really excited to share with you how we can build a retrieval based question answering system using a combination of Langchain, Ray, and Weights and Biases. So, previously, this is actually part two. Part one, we showed how you could use embeddings to create a search engine effectively in just a few lines of Langchain and Ray code. And we brought it up as a service that we could then query. So, now in part two, we're going to build on part one to re re uh, create a retrieval-based question answering system. So that basically is going to be that we take the search results that we had last time, we use that to generate a prompt, and then using that prompt, we ask an LLM to extract an answer from it. Now, you might say, like, why do I want to do this? Well, LLMs have two key problems. Sometimes they just don't have an answer, uh, and they can tell you that they don't have the answer. But unfortunately, a lot of the time, they do what we call hallucination, which is they make up an answer that they are very confident is correct. And that's because they don't have enough data. And, and so uh, that's a, often a problem we encounter. By using a search engine combined with an LLM and the appropriate prompt, we can actually overcome, in many cases, both the ignorance and hallucination problem. So last time we talked about it, this is how we built kind of the information source, the retrieval part of the retrieval engine. We took some HTML files. Uh, we cut them into little sentences-like structures. Uh, we call them chunks. And we embedded them into a very high-dimensional vector space, basically converting those um, sentences into sequences of numbers that we could then use as an index. So that was what we did ahead of time. And then to serve, what we did is we would take the query, we would then do the same kind of embedding of the query, and then we'd find things that were similar to that search result, and then return the, form, uh, the, 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 the most relevant results. And then that is the response that we would show to the user, much like a normal search engine does. Now we're going to expand it. So imagine that we take the system that we just built, and that we, what we're going to do is we're going to use that information and combine a prompt template to generate a prompt that we're now going to pass to our LLM to generate uh, a useful answer that addresses the concern. So let's have a demo now. Uh, we're going to start our service. This is very similar to the service that we set up last time. And let's go through the source code. So in many ways, it's very similar to the source code from last time but there's a few key differences. The first is at the top here, we define the prompt that we're going to pass to the LLM search engine. Today, we'll be using stable LM, which is a really small LLM. It's only about 7 billion parameters. So they don't always have to be fancy. Uh, you don't need the full power of GPT-4 to take answers from a search engine and synthesize them into a single response. Stable LM, uh, you first define the, the system, which is kind of like the personality that you're trying to create within the agent. Um, and then make sure that you then define the prompt that's specific to the question that you have. So you'll notice here that we're defining, we're telling it, here's your context, and here's what we want you to do. We want you to be conservative in describing what it is that you know. Now, once we have that prompt, we're now going to fill in the data from the search engine. And this is really where the power of Langchain comes in. There's one other modification that we're going to make, which is that we're going to add support for uh, word, um, uh, um, weights and biases. So weights and biases is an evaluation tool that is freely available. Um, and then what we can do is we can inspect intermediate values and see how long things are taking. So the first part of the code we'll be looking at is exactly the same. We create the embeddings, but this is where we start to do a few different things. First is that we create um, a pipeline. We have some minor modifications here to how Langchain does things just to ensure stability. Um, but you can see we're specifying the 7 billion parameter model. And we're also specifying that it should use 16-point uh, floats. Now that's the model. Then we use Langchain's capability and pass it um, the LLM we created here, which is a stable LLM pipeline. Uh, there's particular different ways of mixing the data. One is stuff, which is the simplest one. And we're going to take the prompt that we gave above. That's this long sentence. Okay. Now that we have the prompt, we're going to connect it up. 
And so what we're going to do is first we're going to get the, resu uh, the results from our previous system. We're then going to um, use the chain that we created earlier and pass in the documents that we found, in other words, the chunks, and the question that we have. And that's where um, um, Langchain kicks in, takes the results, computes them, um, and then finally passes it to the LLM to summarize. So now let's try to, 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 to hit it. So we have this query script that we've used before. And let's check that the service is up and running. OK, it looks healthy. And we're going to just send a query. You know, what is the difference between pack and spirit in Ray? And what it's doing is it's now sending that query. First, it's going to get the search results. Then it's going to pass it to the LLM to summarize. And you can see here, it's not perfect because it talks about an image, which is what was in the search results. But you can see it actually gets the definition correct. So in Ray, when you want to pack a lot of actors together on a single machine, you say, I want to fit as many of these as I can on a single machine. But other times for performance reasons, if you have like 20 machines and you have 20 actors, you want one actor per machine. So as we can see, it's generated the correct answer in this particular case. What we want to do, though, is kind of look at the observability of this. And this is where weights and biases comes in. Now, this is a very recent integration, like literally in the last week or so. It's not absolutely required here. We can do other things like have the Ray serve instance kind of dump output. But it's a really convenient way to look at the experience as you go in. And so what we're doing here is we go to the weights and biases web page. And every time someone puts in an image, uh, sorry, um, a query, it actually captures the query at all the different levels. So as you can see down here, it has the stuff's documents chain. And the part that we're most interested in is the stable LM pipeline part. And what we can do now is if we go here and click to the prompt, you can see that in addition to the template that we had, it is actually pulling the information from the search engine, and it's embedding it here. And then finally, after all of this, we can now ask it the question between what's the difference between pack and spread and rate. And now we're telling it it's time for the assistant to hand over. And sure enough, that's what allows it to generate the correct answer that we're looking for um, here in terms of summarizing the contents. So let's summarize where we are. What we've done here is we've built uh, a system that allow, uh, we built a question answering system that isn't just the LLM by itself. It's retrieving information from a search engine that we created earlier to generate results that are super accurate. Um, even though the model and the LLM itself is relatively small at 7 billion parameters, it's almost as small as they get. And that can easily fit on a 16 gigabyte GPU. Um, and using that information and through clever prompt engineering, we've created a, a question answering system that overcomes some of the limitations of LLMs as far as not knowing the answer and also uh, not hallucinating and making up an answer by constraining it to the facts that were in the prompt that we passed in. So what's next? Uh, you can, of course, find this code yourself and download it. We now have a repo with all of these examples in it. And if you'd like to build your own systems like this, check out the docs at docs.ray.io. Ray also has a lot of discussion forums and Slack that you can participate in. And of course, if you're interested in a commercial uh, version of this, with production level reliability, just reach out to us and we'll be sure to follow up.